in this video, you will learn how to build responsive websites quickly with Bootstrap 5. So this is the Bootstrap website that they recently changed it. And I think it looks really nice, very modern because Bootstrap was getting a bit of an outdated or old fashioned type of reputation because front end web development has changed a lot in the past few years. We have React now and you write CSS in React a little bit differently. We have Tailwind and CSS itself has also changed with Flexbox and CSS Grid, but it looks great and modern. And I like using Bootstrap for this project in the course too, because it's very easy to use and their components also have a modern look now. And from looking around, it's very popular among, among its users. So I'm confident that there will be a popular library for a very long time. I quickly want to give you an overview of the most powerful features of Bootstrap. So first of all, when you include Bootstrap in your project, you get access to built-in components. So you don't have to create, for example, a whole button from scratch in HTML and CSS yourself. You only have to use one of the Bootstrap classes like BTN and then one of the theme uh, classes like BTN primary, and you will get a complete button, including hover and focus states. And a button is still a pretty simple, uh, small component, but you also get access to more complicated components like a responsive nav bar and carousel and modals and an accordion component and even complete forms, including with cool effects like floating labels. Right, so these are all components that you get out of the box. Now, if these components are not enough, there are also third-party uh, UI kits out there that you can uh, use, and they also adhere to the bootstrap philosophy of the grid and things like that. So you can easily integrate them in your own bootstrap project. Now, it also has a lot of so-called utility classes. So these classes are used for, uh, you know, one-off quick type of styles. So for example, you want to set a font size for a particular uh, element, for example, the heading or, you know, some text. Now you don't set a font size like CSS, right? Font size 50 pixels or something like that. So you set a font size with, by picking one of the options that you get. So there are like five or six different options for the font size. And one of the benefits of uh, these, these options is that it forces consistency because you don't want to have random font sizes all over your project. You do want to have some kind of consistency, right? But there are other uh, utility classes as well. All right, so another powerful feature is the container class because often what happens in your on your websites is that if you have a header, for example, the content will sit right against the edge of the viewport. And we don't want that. We want there to be some padding Right? We want there to be some space between um, the viewport edge and the content. And it's not only the header, it's also the, um, you know, hero section or other, you know, content parts of your website. So Bootstrap has a container class, which very nicely and responsively constrains the width and also centers the content immediately, right? It's just one class and boom, a lot of problems have been solved. So this is very powerful. We'll, we'll see how this works in the project as well. All right, now Bootstrap is also sort of famous for its grid system. So the grid system, um, you know, very briefly, you can create a div and this is going to be a row. So this is how it starts. You create a row and then in that row, you basically have 12 units to allocate. That's how it works, right? So for example, maybe you want uh, two columns, right? So you have a row and the units then go to those columns. So maybe we want two columns that are equally wide so we can both uh, give them six units out of the 12, right? So then um, you can put anything in there and that will take up, you know, half the space, right? And you can fine tune it. Maybe one column needs to be four units and the other a little bit bigger, eight units, right? So now you get a different allocation. That's going to look slightly different. That's the grid system in a nutshell. We'll see how it works in practice. Also, um, Bootstrap is responsive pretty much out of the box. So all of those components that we've seen, the nav bar, the carousel, the modal, the accordion, those are all responsive out of the box. And the utility classes like margins and font size and padding, you can also change them depending on the viewport width, right? Or breakpoints, right? So for example, on smaller viewports, right? Let's say mobile phones, we don't want to have so much vertical space. So I want to decrease the vertical space on smaller uh, devices and then on bigger devices, let's say tablets and upwards, there should be more vertical space. I think that looks better. I think it's more uh, suitable. So that's very easy to do because with Bootstrap, you get these uh, suffixes that you can add. So MD, for example, or LG, those all stand for a particular breakpoint. 
So you can use all of these utility classes. You can slightly change them to really fine tune it depending on the width of the device that you're trying to target. And it's a mobile first philosophy, by the way, right? So the default, if you just use some utility class for a margin or padding, for example, without any of those breakpoints in the class, that's going to be for mobile. And then what you can do is from a particular breakpoint and onwards, right? And bigger, you can change it, for example, right? We'll talk much more about that. And also the typography automatically scales down or up depending on how wide the viewport is, right? So on smaller devices, it's automatically going to be slightly smaller. And on bigger devices, it's a little bit bigger. Now I will say Bootstrap is most useful if you already know CSS itself. In fact, I highly recommend that you master CSS itself because it doesn't take that long and it helps you immensely as a front end web developer. So check out my professional CSS course. The link is in the description. Also because Bootstrap does not cover 100% of the things that you want to do. So often you do need to write some custom CSS yourself. So make sure that you have learned CSS itself properly. All right, so the link is in the description. There are some other things that I quickly want to explain to you. So um, in my code editor here, if I type some classes here, I get these suggestions. You do not get them out of the box in Visual Studio Code. So you need to install an extension if you want them. So the extension is called um, HTML CSS. What this extension uh, can do, you can see it's very popular, but what it can do is it can see what you're linking to in your HTML. So it can see the... Um, the style sheet that you're, that you're importing, and it can see in the style sheet what kind of classes there are available, right? So then it can suggest them. Okay, now secondly, how to include Bootstrap in your project. So we will go through this, of course, but just to quickly show you, there are two options. So option one is with NPM and Node.js, and this will give you more fine-grained control because you get access to the actual source code of Bootstrap. So for example, um, if you use BTN or BTN primary, that will give you a blue color if you don't want to get a blue color for BT and primary, you have to go into the source code and they use SAS for that, which by the way is also taught in my professional CSS course. But if you want to change the, the primary color from blue, from blue to a different color, you have to do it like that, right? So you have to go into the, to the settings, into the source code and, and configure it differently. Now, of course, that's more uh, cumbersome to set up, but you do get more fine grained control. Now, second option is a little bit easier, but you don't get the source code, you get the uh, the build code and we can actually see what you get if you um, copy the link here and open it up in a new tab right so this is the actual style sheet that we can simply link to with a link element in our html right so the browser will make a network request to this address and this is what we will get back and don't worry we'll see how this works very easy um, it's just like linking to your own uh, custom style sheet and this is what we get back and in here you can see there are some classes right so it's, it's almost not legible here because this is the optimized code Right, the source code is in SAS and you have to do it with NPM. This is already the optimized the build code. So it's going to be minified and things like that. Right, so here you can see there's a certain class and then you can see what this uh, selector, I should say, you can see what this rule set uh, applies. Okay, now some components need JavaScript as well. For example, the accordion component, right here we can click and it does something, right? So Bootstrap needs to get access to the click event with JavaScript and then do something. So there is also a JavaScript portion of Bootstrap. So that's also what we're going to link to because we're going to use some of those components that need JavaScript. Okay, now Bootstrap also has icons. You don't have to use these icons. There are also other options, but these icons work well with Bootstrap. So you'll see how we can include that and how it works. But way if this was helpful i'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe also check out my courses on css and javascript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master css or javascript and i will also release other courses soon like react and node.js so if you want to be notified then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter you can find the link in the description thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon